So, first question, and there is quite a bit on parametrics in this quiz, because parametrics is a tough topic. You get given parametric equations here and here, which I've chosen to number. You didn't have to number them. It just makes it easier to communicate what you're doing and how your equations interact if you do. So that's why I've called them, sorry, I've called them equation one and equation two. So once I do that, to form the Cartesian equation, what I'm trying to do is eliminate the parameter, trying to eliminate the parameter. So that's why the very first thing that I do is make the parameter the subject of one of the equations so I can substitute it into the other, then the parameter is gone. Uh, you can see it's much easier to do that with equation one than equation two, so that's what I rearrange, and there is my substitution. So are you okay with 12x squared? Thumbs up. Great. Now, admittedly, well, let me actually ask this. How many people got question two? Hands up, straight. Okay, a small number. This happens, right? Sometimes a question is early on and it just stops you, right? So typical exam technique, don't get intimidated, just move on and come back and if you have the time, we'll see how you go. Now, let's have a look at the question because as you can see my solution there, it might not be the solution that came to mind. Just for the people who did get an answer, do I have some agreement? Yes, no, maybe? Looking good, okay. So what did I do? For what values of B, is this line tangent to this curve. Okay. Now, because it's y equals x cubed, you run into a problem. We've looked at questions like this before, and if you have a look at the, um, excuse me, at the question beneath, this is how questions like this often play out. I'll come back to this solution in a minute. But when you want things to be tangent, often what you do is you make the discriminant to be equal to zero. Right? You've seen that before, you solve simultaneously, you make the discriminant equal to zero. But you can't do that with this curve, why not? Yeah, why can't you use the discriminant here? What, what kind of equation does the discriminant relate to? Think, think. I'm waiting for it. You guys know the answer to this. You only use the discriminant when it's what kind of equation? Quadratic. It's a quadratic, right? And when you try and solve this simultaneously, you've got an x cubed flying there, right? So that's no use to you. So I have to try some other kind of approach. So here's what I thought. Here's what I drew. There we go. In blue, I've got my uh, y equals x cubed curve, okay? And in green, what I'm trying to visualize is y equals, I should write it down for you, y equals 12x plus b. Now what this means is you've got the gradient locked in, right? That's what the 12x tells you. It's a very steep line. Uh, but b is variable. So that means your graph can move up and down. Does that make sense? So this version here, could slide upwards, could translate, and you would get the same, it's still y equals 12x plus b, just a different value of b. Now once you can see that, you can immediately see from this very rough drawing, there's gonna be two solutions. Does that make sense? Like I don't know what they are yet, but I know there are going to be two, okay? Because solving simultaneously gives you this equation, right? You're kind of like, I, I can't do very much with this. It's a cubic after all, you can't put it into the formula, you can't use the discriminant, so therefore you need some other kind of tool, which is why this topic is what topic that we're in right now? Right now, what's it called? Gee. Well, we're doing really badly today. Come on guys, we can name the topic. This is geometrical applications of calculus, right? So I'm using differentiation to my advantage. So that's why the first thing I do over here is I differentiate. Okay, so you can see what I've done is I've found the gradient of the curve, and of course it's variable because it's the cubic curve, so it changes all along. But the gradient of the line isn't going to change. It's always 12, you see that? It's always 12. So I want, if they're gonna be really tangent, then somewhere along this cubic curve, it's gradient has to be at 12. In fact, it's gonna be twice, right? Those two I showed you before. So once you've got that, you say, well, let the, gradient function equal that particular gradient and you get some solutions out of that, right? Because x squared equals four. So here are my two values, okay? But you're not out of the woods yet. What this tells you is, this is where that's going to occur at negative two and that's going to occur at positive two. Well, that's a bad scale, but you get the idea, okay? So this tells you where you're going to have tangents, but it doesn't tell you what those tangents are. So therefore, I've got to do a little more work. Uh, what I have to find is, okay, well, where do those tangents intersect? So I did that, right? And there's two solutions. You notice this? When you go ahead and you put them into x cubed, you'll find two different coordinates. 
Um, and then to get the equations in straight lines to find b, I've got to substitute it into those equations in the straight lines to then evaluate. Okay, so does that make sense? You see how I, there's quite a lot of thinking that goes into that. You've got to really understand how to use the derivative, not just go through a rule and crunch it. Does that make sense? All right. Question three in comparison was relatively straightforward. So it's even been given to you in general form, which is convenient. So I just had to go b squared minus 4ac. Uh, the discriminant equals zero for equal roots. And so I've got negative six or two. Do I have some nods, shakes? Yes, no? Looking good? Okay. All right. Yeah, question. Where are you looking at, sorry? What have I done? Which, which line are you talking about? Are you talking about this spot here? Yeah, so remember this is b squared, right? So there's b right there. But once you square it, if you square something, the sign doesn't matter. So that's why I haven't written it. Because you're still going to get k squared plus 8k plus 16. Yeah? Negative signs are really your thing, Thinura. You watch out for those. So, yeah, there you go. Okay, so then what comes next is question four. And there are obviously many parts to question four. So let's start off with the easy one. Okay? You're just looking for f of x equals 0, what are those? When f of x equals 0, you're going to get intercepts, right? So I find my intercepts because, of course, this guy in here is x minus 3, x plus 3. So I've got my two x-intercepts there. So that looks good. I'm going to just funnel them back in the back of my mind. Then this is what we've been working on most recently. So hopefully you're starting to get into a bit of a rhythm here. Um, I've differentiated right here. And then I've instinctively factorized. Why did I do that for? Why, do I, why am I factorizing? Because I'm going to solve. I'm going to solve for what? What am I solving? I'm solving for the coordinates of what? For the coordinates of x for when? Why, what am I going toward? I'm looking for stationary points. So I want the derivative to be equal to 0, and I can find that most easiest when it's been factorized, like so. Okay. It's very easy to read off. I've got this solution and this solution. Okay, uh, you can see, oh, I'm missing some working there, sorry. That should say y equals. You can see I immediately work out my coordinates. Why do I do that? Just have a look at the question. Have a look at the question. Come on, Paul, you know the answer to this. I'm waiting for an answer. Why am I finding the coordinates? Why do I go straight to y? Because the question says find the coordinates. That's why. Just read the question. Okay. Um, once you've got those, I still need to determine their nature. You can see the path that I've gone down. I have found the second derivative. Why did I do that for? Go, go rewind. I chose the second derivative. I chose the second derivative because I could do the first derivative, but it's easy to differentiate this thing. It's a polynomial. Super simple. No quotients or anything like that. And the reason for that was because I wanted to determine the nature. Uh, please don't skip on this part here. Please say, state the concavity. That's really important. Uh, will you lose marks for that? Maybe, maybe not. But you should state your understanding of what's going on. Like you know what a positive second derivative means. It's about concavity up or down. So I got my relative max, got my relative minimum. And then here's my graph. Now I'll tell you a, uh, a cheeky little secret. Uh, when I drew this, right, how did I get my curve looking so good? Did I use a template or something like that? that? No, I don't have a template for that curve. I just, I just drew the curve. I knew what rough shape was going to have because it's got a max, it's got a min. Once I drew the curve, roughly, I just put the axes on top, wherever I knew they were going to be. Right? Um, I knew that I wanted, for example, I knew that the y-intercept was going to be negative 27. How did I know that? Think. It's in the original equation, right? Uh, all the way up here, I expanded. You see that? That's where I expanded. So I know what my y-intercept is going to be, and I've found just down here, I've found what my y-coordinates of my stationary point are going to be. So negative 27, negative 32, I know they are in the uh, same vicinity. So therefore, you see, I position them next to each other, and I place my, my y-axis where it belongs. Does that make sense? I probably could improve my scale a little bit, but you get the idea. Okay, uh, and then the rest of it is there. Any questions about that? Does that make sense? For what values of the graph of the graph uh, of y equals f of x uh, is y of f of x? 
concave down, you can see I've just solved for when the second derivative is negative. So there's your value, okay? It's worth doing a quick sense check for that because you just drew the graph. You just drew the graph, you can know where that's right, yeah? X is less than negative one, where's that gonna be? Negative one somewhere around here, yeah? So does it look concave down on the left-hand side? Yeah. Does it look it? Yeah, it does, right? Look, concave down, concave down, concave down. So what you've found is the point of inflection. I haven't proven that it's the point of inflection, but the question did not ask me to do that, so that's why I don't go any further and do a neighborhood test. Does that make sense? Okay, 